All right, guys, in today's video, we're talking about the next generation consoles once again, because we have another third party developer chiming in and giving their thoughts on what we can expect from these consoles. And more specifically, this developer is actually focusing on the SSD technology in both the PlayStation 5 and next gen Xbox and how, according to this developer, games with massive detailed worlds will actually benefit the most from the SSD tech inside of these consoles. And I find this interesting on its own, but it becomes even more interesting when you consider the fact that this is exactly what Sony has focused on. We know that the PlayStation 5's biggest advantage by a mile, I think it's safe to say, over the next generation Xbox is the SSD and how much Sony put into it. So does this potentially mean that we could see even bigger, even more detailed worlds when it comes to PlayStation 5 exclusive games? I think it does. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. You guys know I like to highlight this stuff because it's always interesting to hear, especially what third party developers have to say, people who know what they're talking about and understand what these consoles potentially will be capable of. We're also talking about the initiative, Microsoft's big quadruple A or triple A studio, and how if recent rumors and reports are to be believed, they might not be showing their new game at Xbox's July event. And the reasoning I find pretty interesting Apparently, they wouldn't show it because they would save it to announce it or reveal it after whatever Sony has to show in August during their state of play. We talked a little bit about this. Sony is apparently planning to counter Xbox's July event with a small event or maybe even a big event of their own. It will be a state of play where they have some big first and third party game reveals and announcements that they actually held back. And so it seems Microsoft may actually be trying to counter that as well with the initiatives game, whatever that may be. So I don't know if this is actually going to happen or not, but either way, I do find it interesting. I love to see this. I love to see the competition. So yeah, this is what we're going to be talking about in today's video. If you could do me a big favor, make sure you hit the like button to show your support and help the video out. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future content and hit the bell notification icon as well so you are notified immediately anytime a new video goes live. But starting here with what the developer had to say about these consoles, Sony and Microsoft, the former especially, have highlighted SSDs as one of the biggest improvements being made to next-gen consoles, and developers across the industry have spent quite a lot of time talking about the advantages that they will present. One such developer is Sampo Toysi, hopefully I'm saying their name correctly, co-founder of 10 Tons, developers of the upcoming open-world post-apocalyptic action RPG, Dismantle. Speaking with Gaming Bolt in a recent interview, when asked about how developers will be able to leverage the PS5 and next-generation Xbox SSD, in his view, he said that being able to load faster and stream more content much more quickly will be a big boost and that games aiming for large, high-detailed worlds will benefit from it more than most. He added that 10 Tons upcoming Dismantle 2 uses streaming tech for its world, but comfortably falls within the limits of current gen hardware. Everything will feel a bit snappier, but that's already something you've sort of gotten used to on PCs with SSDs, he said. But now, for the first time, you can rely on that speed being available on a console. There have been studies on how much of loading the player can tolerate before it starts to be annoying, making it load faster, you can simply add more stuff in shorter time and still provide a good user experience. Streaming world content is one of the big things that will get better. You can have a more detailed world as you can stream data faster from mass storage into the GPU. You can also move faster in the game world as the hardware can keep up better. Dismantle has also also has a streaming system for the world, but we are probably not exceeding even current gen capabilities in that regard. Games with massive, extremely detailed worlds will benefit the most. He also added that as far as multi-platform developers are concerned, they will most likely scale data in such a manner that their games work the same on both the PS5 and the next generation Xbox in spite of any differences in hardware. Multi-platform games will probably find a suitable bandwidth and tools to scale the amount of data so that it works on all platforms, he said. It might be that texture detail level can be varied according to available bandwidth, for example. Now, that last part he says here is particularly interesting because he's maybe he's thinking that there might be leftover bandwidth or overhead, I guess, in 
what developers could do with the SSD technology. And he's saying that we could maybe see texture detail levels vary. And so is he implying that maybe for some multi-platform games, the level of detail seen in textures could actually be higher on the PlayStation 5. Maybe that could be one of the benefits that this SSD could offer. But we also have to think about just how powerful, how many compute units the next generation Xbox has. We could potentially see significantly better ray tracing, maybe as a counter to that. So it all depends on what developers want to do. And what he's saying here at the end is not all that surprising. I think we all honestly expect this when it comes to third party multi-platform games. We know that most developers are not going to take full advantage. In fact, I think it's safe to say that all multi-platform developers will not be able to take full advantage of either the PlayStation 5 or next generation Xbox. So what it really comes down to is the first party developers. And so the thing about his comments here that interests me the most is how he's saying that games that are massive in size with the most amount of detail these are the games that are going to benefit most specifically from the SSDs, not even necessarily the GPU, right? I mean, the GPU is important, but he's not talking about the CPU. He's talking about these SSDs and how it's going to allow assets and all of these things in the game world to be streamed in instantaneously at extremely high uh, detail level. And so I just can't help but once again, you know, my mind starts racing about the future of PlayStation 5 exclusives. We've talked about this time and time again, and we will continue to talk about it because in my opinion, it is the PlayStation 5's greatest strength and is the, it is the thing, the single most defining thing about the PlayStation brand, and it will be the most defining thing about the PlayStation 5. It's its exclusive content, exclusive games. Not only is the exclusivity in itself a big deal, but then you start to imagine what these first party developers will be able to achieve with this SSD. I'm telling you guys right now, I continue to emphasize this and talk about it because there are a lot of people who continue to downplay what Sony, what Mark Cerny decided to do with the PlayStation 5's architecture. We've heard multiple, multiple developers, both big and small, talk about this and how, yeah, Sony, they did it right here, man. And people are underestimating what Sony Studios will be able to achieve with this SSD. In terms of game size, scale, and scope, it really is starting to seem to me, and this is just a massive assumption on my part, and maybe it frankly is just wishful thinking, potentially, it really seems like Sony will be able to achieve things with the size, scale, and scope of their games that you will not see on the competition, even from their first party studios. You will certainly not see it with multi-platform games. And so to me, this has become very clear that this is going to be the PlayStation 5's greatest strength is when you see certain exclusive games, even if it's just a few, to me, that's more than enough. Something I've never understood is how there are um, people out there who talk about this, like they acknowledge it. They're like, yeah, you'll see you know, this SSD taken full advantage of on PlayStation's first party exclusive games. But other than that, you're not gonna see much. And I find it weird that they say it in that way because it's like, what do you mean? You're you're downplaying that. You're making it sound like Sony's first party studios and them being able to take full advantage of the SSD and do things that are not possible on any other platform. Like that's some small thing. That's not a small thing at all. That's absolutely massive. And so we just have another third party developer here who is kind of once again, confirming this. Now we do know that apparently Microsoft is attempting some type of solution to close the gap potentially between the SSD inside of the PlayStation 5 and the next generation Xbox. And make no mistake about it, the difference here is very significant. In fact, yes, the Xbox Series X is a more powerful console with more compute units, but you're talking maybe about, I don't know, say like a 16, 17, 18% difference overall in terms, you know, if you're talking about T-flop count, but when it comes to the SSDs specifically, there's almost a 50% difference in what the PlayStation 5's SSD can do versus what the next generation Xbox SSD can do. Apparently Microsoft is trying to close that gap with their velocity architecture. It remains to be seen if it's actually going to make that big of a difference. But one thing I can tell you for sure is that Sony's first party studios will take full advantage of this SSD. And if there's one game that I think we will see it from, the first game, the first big AAA open world game, where we're gonna see things done that you just maybe weren't expecting, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's going to be Horizon Forbidden West. 
if there's any studio that can really push the limits like really quickly on the PlayStation 5 and take advantage of this SSD, it's going to be Guerrilla Games. So I've been talking about this topic way too much. We have to move on here before this turns into a 20 minute video. We're gonna talk about the initiative. Microsoft has announced a major Xbox game showcase for July 23rd and long in a long list of games, including Halo Infinite, Rares Everwild, and new projects from Playground Games and Obsidian are either confirmed or rumored to be included. Unfortunately, a new rumor states one closely watched Xbox studio will not be participating in the big show. According to Venture Beats' Jeff Grubb, Microsoft's new studio, The Initiative, will not be showing their first game this month, despite rumors to the contrary from other corners of the internet. Apparently, this is mainly just a case of timing. The initiative was only founded in 2018 and whatever they're working on just isn't ready for prime time yet. Of course, take this with a grain of salt, but most of Jeff Grubb's predictions about this year's digital gaming events have come true. And so this isn't huge news, but I don't necessarily know that he's on the mark here. Now, obviously, Jeff Grubb, Grubb probably knows more than I do. I don't have any contacts. He does. And he's claiming that the reasoning for this is because of timing, because they were only founded in 2018. However, honestly, like between 2018 and now, that seems like more than enough time to at least get something, whether it be like a small little teaser trailer or whatever. Um, but he's claiming it's timing. Like they're just not ready to show their game yet. I don't believe that, okay? I 100% believe that the initiative has something that they're ready to show and it's good to go. But if I had to guess as to why the initiative's game would not show up at this event, it's not because they're not ready to show it. I think it's because they're gonna save it to counter whatever Sony has because Microsoft is thinking the same way Sony is, at least it seems that way to me. And so, yeah, that's just my prediction on this, but who knows, maybe it could be because the initiative just simply isn't ready to talk about their game yet. We've been hearing rumors that it's supposed to be like a perfect dark reboot. We've been hearing it's gonna be a new IP. Frankly, I would hope to see a new IP, but you know, I'm interested to see what it would look like to see a perfect, a triple A perfect dark reboot from a new studio. That would definitely be interesting to me, but I think if we don't see it at this July event, I think we will still see it this year. That's just my prediction, but I would be shocked if Microsoft somehow did not show the initiative's game in 2020 and they saved it until 2021. That just wouldn't make much sense to me because it's one of their biggest studios that people are very excited about. So that's gonna do it for the video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I apologize if it was a little bit ranty, but I did find this information pretty interesting and I figured you guys would find it interesting as well. So I want you to leave your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you think about what this third party developer had to say about the SSD tech inside of the next generation consoles? Do you agree with some of the things I'm saying or do you disagree with them? Let me know why or why not. And what do you think about the initiative potentially not showing their game at the end of this month? Do you think that it's because it's just not ready or do you think it's because Microsoft wants to save it? Let me know. Leave the video a like if you did enjoy it or found it informative. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload and feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.